Hello, shalom. Welcome again to What Up with Gloria. I hope everybody is well and I hope everybody is keeping safe. Amen and amen. Welcome again. Uh, and a special welcome to those who are joining us for the very first time. And to my wa returning word gang, you know that you're always welcome. Amen and amen. Uh, and let me remind those people who have been tuning into this channel but you have not been able to subscribe yet, please do not forget to subscribe and leave me a comment. Amen and amen. Um, I recently got a message from somebody on Facebook, on my Facebook page, and uh, they asked me a question on something that has been going around. Uh, there are some videos online that I had not seen myself before. But she sent me these links to some videos that are teaching on how to pray with salt. And this person who has known me for a bit was asking me what my thoughts or whether it was biblical or not to pray with salt. She said that she was convicted, convinced about praying with salt after watching so many videos and seeing people's testimonies. People had, were leaving comments saying that it worked for them. And she wanted to, before she starts using salt, she wanted to consult with somebody who maybe she felt could give some input. Now, before we go into whether this is right or wrong, let's look at salt in the context of scripture. Now, first of all, the Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. That's what the Bible tells us that we are the salt of the earth. The Bible also tells us in the book of Colossians that we should have our speech seasoned with salt. Salt is mentioned a lot in the Bible, okay? Now, in the book of Leviticus, the Bible did talk, does talk about an offering of salt. In the book of Numbers, chapter 18, God actually had a salt covenant with his people. The Bible also asks in the book of Job chapter, chapter 6 and verse 6, can flavorless food be eaten without salt? There's also another scripture in the book of Ezekiel. And it says, on the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean, nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in clothes. The Bible also says in the book of Judges that after Abimelech attacked, pressed pressed his attack against the city until he had captured it and killed its people. Then he destroyed the city and scattered salt over it. So many scriptures talk about salt in the Bible. But the one that people are leaning on mostly is the one that says that we are the salt of the earth. And then there's the one in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2 where Elisha heals the water of Jericho with salt. The Bible lets us know that there was a problem with the waters in Jericho and these people had called the man of God because they wanted the water to be purified. Obviously, they could not survive without water. And the Bible says that Elisha went and took, um, got some salt. And I want to read that. Uh, from the book of 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 19 to 22. It says, the people of the city of Jericho told Elisha, the city's location is as good as you will ever find, but the water is bad and the land cannot grow crops. Elisha said, bring me a new jar and put salt into it. They brought it to him. He went to the spring and threw the salt into it. Then he said, this is what the Lord says. I have purified this water. No more deaths or crops Crop failures will come from this water to this day. The water to this day, the water is still pure, as Elisha had said. Now, this has become the basis of a lot of people who are using water to pray. They're using salt with water to pray. Now, obviously, the healing of the waters of Jericho is a this is a major miracle back in the day. Obviously, the water was very bad and the people were obviously going to die. They could not grow any crops. They were living in a, like a salty, a place that had a lot of salt, um, water that was bad. Now, scientifically and biologically, salt is a, has been used to purify. It's used to preserve. 
and it's used to cleanse. All right. When you go into hospitals, they make sailor drips with water and salt. When you have a sore throat, the doctor will tell you to gargle salt and water. You can also use salt and water to disinfect a wound or clean a cut. But does that mean that it's okay for us to start as Christians, as believers in Jesus, to start using salt and water as a medium of prayer to ask for miracles? The Bible tells us in Jesus' own words that whatsoever you will ask in my name shall be given unto you. When we pray, the only sure way to get a miracle from God is praying through the name of Jesus. And as wonderful as salt is, I, am, I mean, you cannot replace the name of Jesus with salt. You cannot replace the name of Jesus with water. And there is no greater element on earth than water. We cannot survive without water. We can live without food for a bit. But we cannot live without water even for, maybe you can't, I don't think you can live with, without water for a week. But even as huge and as important as water is, you cannot replace water with the name of Jesus. There's only one name, according to the Bible, that has been given that men should be saved, that men should be delivered, that we can get miracles. There's only the name of Jesus. When you begin to double with salt, you can, if you, are, if you have an infection and you want to clean it with salt and water, you can clean it and then you can pray to Jesus to heal you. But you cannot use salt as a medium. I saw this link, I think it was on Facebook. Somebody was saying you take the salt and you speak to the salt and then God will, will use that salt and will listen to what the salt is saying. I've even seen people who are talking about playing with Fanta where you take a bottle of Fanta and you put your name in there and you pray and take Coca-Cola. I have seen cinnamon and water. There are people who are using lemon and eggs. Guys, you need to be very careful. Otherwise, you're going to start performing rituals of witchcraft in the name of prayer. Most of these things are bordering on witchcraft. Some of these things that people are using with cola nuts and cinnamon and pepper and lemons and eggs, that's not biblical. Come on. Did we start out in the spirit and now we are ending up in the flesh? And this is not even the flesh. You are started in the, in the spirit and you're going to end up in witchcraft and performing rituals with salt and lemon and Fanta and Coca-Cola. If Coca-Cola was a healer, a lot of people would have had great miracles. There's a lot of people who drink Coca-Cola. So as I shared with this sister and we went through scriptures, salt is a good element. It's very good. We cannot, you know, most of us cannot eat food, um, food without salt uh, unless you have been asked by the doctor to not eat salt because maybe you are hypertensive. But salt is a critical part of our lives, of our diet, of our lives. We cannot, most of us, live without it. And like I said, it's used in medical science to heal, to make saline uh, waters, to make um, the water that they use to hydrate babies is mixed with a little bit of sugar and salt. So yes, salt is very important and salt can cure diseases scientifically, but salt cannot bring you a miracle spiritually. When you begin to use salt spiritually, you are going into the realm of rituals and witchcraft and magic. So be very careful. Before you start praying with salt, please go to your Bible and refer to some of these scriptures that I've given. And especially remember that Jesus said that there's only one name through which we can pray. When we pray through that name, the name of Jesus, whatever we ask for shall be given. Amen and amen. God bless you. Like I said, please, if you have not subscribed, please remember to subscribe to our channel. You can leave me a comment. And if you uh, can share this video with, if you know somebody who has been praying with salt or they are praying with other things or they are not even sure where they stand with this debate of praying with salt, please share this video and God will bless you. Amen and amen. God bless you.